Good morning. Good morning, Paul. You should know that next week um, our supply priest will be uh, Father Henry. I think is the way we pronounce his name. Kind of Henry. H e n e r y. Henry. Henry. Yeah, Henry. I think it, I think I think it'll be we'll all make a new friend. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Cool. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. On the second page. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us say together the jubilate found on the bottom of page three. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. I called to the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered by setting me free. The Lord is at my side, therefore I will not fear. What can anyone do to me? The Lord is at my side to help me. I will triumph over those who hate me. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in flesh. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in rulers. All the ungodly encompass me. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They hem me in. They hem me in on every side. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. They swarm about me like bees. They blaze like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I will repel them. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. 
he who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna, Lord. Send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the homes of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Samuel. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Let me choose 12,000 men, and I will set out and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and discouraged and throw him into a panic, and all the people are, who are with him will flee. I will strike down only the king, and I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man, and all people will be at peace. The advice pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Call Hushai and the archite also, and let us hear too what he has to say. When Hushai came and Absalom, Absalom said to him, This is what Ahithophel has said. Shall we do as he advises? If not, you tell us. Then Hushai said to Absalom, This time the counsel that Ahithophel has given is not good. Hushai continued, You know that your father and his men are warriors, and that they are enraged, like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. Besides, your father is expert in war. He will not spend the night with the troops. Even now he has hidden himself in one of the pits, or in some other place. And when some of the troops fall at the first attack, whoever hears it will say, there has been a slaughter among the troops who follow Absalom. Then even the valiant warrior, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will utterly melt with fear, for all Israel knows that your father is a warrior, and that those who are with him are valiant warriors. But my counsel is all Israel be gathered to you, from Dan to Beersheba, like the sand by the sea, the multitude, and that you go to the battle in person. So we shall come upon him in whatever place he may be found, and we shall light on him as the dew falls on the ground. And he will not survive, nor will any of those with him. If he withdraws into a city, then all Israel will bring ropes to that city, and we shall drag it into the valley, until not even a pebble is to be found there. Absalom and all the men of Israel said, This counsel of Hushai and the Archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. The Lord had ordained to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, so that the Lord might bring ruin on Absalom. Then Hushai said to the priests, Zadok and Abiathar, Thus and so did Ahithophel, Counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel. And thus and so I have counseled. Therefore, send quickly and tell David, Do not lodge tonight at, at the fords of the wilderness, but by all means cross over. Otherwise, the king and all the people who are with him will be swallowed up. Jonathan and Hamaraz were waiting at Enrugal. A servant girl used to go and tell them, and they would go and tell King David, for they could not risk being seen entering the city. But a boy saw them and told Absalom, so both of them went away quickly and came to the house of a man at Berhom, who had a well in his courtyard, and they went down into it. The man's wife took a covering, stretched it over the well's mouth, 
and spread out grain on it, and nothing was known of it. When Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, Where are Ahimez and Jonathan? The woman said to them, They have crossed over the brook of water. And when they had searched and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. After they had gone, the men came up out of the well and went and told King David. They said to David, Go and cross the water quickly, for thus and so has the fifth well counseled you against it. So David and all the people who were with him set out and crossed the Jordan. By daybreak, not one was left who had not crossed the Jordan. When Ephithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey and went off home to his own city. He set his house in order and hanged himself. He died and he was buried in the tomb of his father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Let us say together Canticle 17, the Song of Simeon. Lord, you have now set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The New Testament reading is from Galatians. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so, you see, those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with Abraham, who believed. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the one who is righteous will live by faith. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 20, Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from John. 
I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you because you do not believe in him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, of whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? The word of the Lord. Standing as you are able, let us say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will do suffrage B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. God, you hold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. And you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive gratefully the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you to so guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. amen. This week we pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff, our bishop, Sandy and Becky, our wardens, Jessica, Phil, Connie, Jim, Deanna, and Pat, our vestry and clerk. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Mary's Dowsman. In our community, we pray for all Burlington area churches, for Loving, for the Transitional Living Center, for the Women's Resource Center, and for our diocesan hospitality center. We pray for those suffering from war, natural disasters, or the economic crises in our world today. We pray for those who are our enemies. We pray for those in the armed forces, and especially those deployed. We pray for Jim and Sandy, Jack Payne and Margaret McCann, for David and Dorothy McDonald. We pray for Richard Peters celebrating a birthday this week. We celebrate for anyone celebrating an anniversary or preparing for the birth of a child or celebrating the birth of a child or preparing for the baptism. We pray for those in need, John, Jane, Don, Marion, Marilyn, Cindy, Betty, Henry, Mary, Marilyn, Pidge, Lana, Estelle, David, Jimmy, Tommy. We pray for those who have died. Charles Fowler, Bob Emery, Eunice York. Let us pray for those suffering from natural disasters, domestic and foreign violence, and the pandemic and its effects. Let us pray for nations and peoples as they strive to be better and to do better. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your measurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.